glad you're here to talk your head off to us. Thank you. It's my last head I'm talking off. Oh, <coughs> well, I'm, I'm flattered. I'm flattered. This is the new record, Now and Then. And, of course, my first question was going to be, what do all these fabulous symbols mean on it? And they mean... I haven't quite decided how mysterious they should be yet. Let me have a look. Okay. Uh, so this man over here. How are you doing? Okay. Yeah. Um, okay, okay, fine. He says he's just seen Jimmy Page. <laughs> uh, um, well, they, they mean whatever you want them to mean, basically. It's, um, I thought it was time to get back to a little bit of the kind of mysterious, um, unexplicable phenomena of our time. Basically, this is the kind of distorted symbol for a fantastic soccer team. Uh-huh. <laughs> and, and it gets more and more deep and meaningless as time goes on. Uh, well, you've created the mystery right there. I'm just adding to the mystery. The mystery was always there. <laughs> this record seems, the songs on it seem more like songs. There seems mm -hmm. to be very much more of a structure there. Yeah. And knowing how closely you collaborated with Phil Johnston on this mm -hmm. record, was that his idea to put some structure in the songs? Well, uh, I spent all my career trying to vary what I do. Try, in fact, from the band of joy before I was chosen to be the singer in the Yardbirds, I always tried to change and vary my music. I used to steal from somebody and borrow from somebody else to create something that I really enjoyed. And when I teamed up with Paige, with Led Zeppelin, we constantly tried to search. In fact, I look at some old interviews. We're always looking to change, uh, to modify and to bring in new, new affectations to our music. Basically, that's what I've done all the way down the line. In my solo career, even my little honey drippers thing, you know, all that. But with this record, there's so much interest in the Led Zeppelin phenomena. There's so much kind of, so many clones around right now. And Phil Johnston is a very kind of, he's the, the sort of typical angry young British museum and also musician, because mm -hmm. he comes from the past, but he's also very au courant. Mm -hmm. And he said, listen, why don't you stop denying your past? Why don't you just jump back on the bandwagon, and let's write some songs which everybody can sing. So I began. And I started diversifying and wandering off, and he kept saying, come back, come back, you know? And so what we have there is much more structured. It's much more satisfying, too, because even I know the songs now. <laughs> I can sing them, too, you know? We well, tell you about uh, the Phil as a, as a British museum and also as a musician. It seems to me that the real artists that I love and manage to come out with a bold new product every mm. time, of which I include you in that, are all people who you could also call musicologists to a certain extent because yeah. they have such a knowledge, particularly of blues, mm. that that's where it all stems from. Yeah. Well, Phil knows very little about the blues and that's his great asset for me because he brings in much more of a kind of tunesmith element he's much more from kind of um tuned into the beach boys and tuned into classic pop jangle jangle guitar pop that's you know? where you get which your structure is, yeah, yeah which is great really i mean i thought it was kind of like selling out in a way to sort of run to the chorus what did some very uh successful band recently said it's fought you write a song, it's four to the bar, four to the chorus, and four to the bank. Well, I never really kind of went along with, with that, but I must admit that, that Phil and the rest of the band have been, um, have been very encourageable, and they've really helped me face up to the fact that I did do a lot before, and there's no point in denying what I did and where I came from. And what I should do is utilize it right now in a contemporary form bring it slap bang up to date as if it is Led Zeppelin 15 <laughs> rather than now and then you know mm. well you have stolen from yourself on this record mm. how do you how does yourself feel about that well I feel that if everybody else is doing it I can join in and I can kind of really enjoy it you know? I don't feel any um you see there's no nothing uh, there is no sanctuary in music and there's also you don't have to be so kind of reverent mm. about music Music and the kind of structure of Led Zeppelin, if you like, was irreverence with the blues. Like, it doesn't matter what it is, here's how the English did it. Mm -hmm. it's, it was the Yardbirds meet Howling Wolf. This is really the Eurythmics fall in love with art and noise and get married in the Chicago church on the, you know, on the west side or wherever it is, in the, in the black side of the thing. Mm -hmm. So, there should be no area that you can really stop.
stop going into. Ask David, he knows. Mm -hmm. Is imitation the sincerest form of flattery? Yeah, but it gets tiresome as well. <laughs> you know, uh, I guess to begin with you flattered, then after a while you go, well, why don't you take it a bit farther? If Paige and I took it farther, and if, if people like Led Zeppelin, because of Stairway, they have a whole lot of love, and, and uh, Kashmir, they were all different songs, radically different. Mm. Unless you'd have known, they shouldn't have been by the same band, because by today's standards, what I saw when I walked in here was the same old stuff with like a little bit of... And that sort of thing, you know, and it's yeah. easy, that's easy. You just get a pair of Lurex pants, stick a banana down your trousers, and you're off and running, you know? Doesn't that, doesn't that disappoint you so much to know that here... I don't need a banana, if that's what you mean. Yeah. <laughs> okay, well, maybe you don't need a banana, but I mean, wouldn't you, aren't you disappointed to know that out there there's millions of Joe Q publics just biting the banana again and again and again mm -hmm. and it, doesn't it disappoint you to know that they're what? more interested in Led Zeppelin than some great new work you've done on well, a new Well they're record? not particularly, it's just that, it's just that the Led Zeppelin myth has been extended now by the mission and the cult and uh, a couple of other pensioners, you know, and so everybody goes, oh but Zeppelin was much better than that. Maybe it'll happen to me too, but I've kind of taken the essence of Zeppelin and I am the singer of Led Zeppelin. And I the essence of the changes of Led Zeppelin brought it up to date. So, I can never ever hope to top it. I can never ever expect to be taken uh, as um, taken to the hearts of people quite like Led Zeppelin was, because I'm only a part of it, you know? And it was the chemistry, I know that's an old corny 70s saying, but it was the chemistry of four people that made it work. Not me, I was just preening around, singing about it over the hills and far away. Mm -hmm. But I mean, it, took, it takes four to tango. This is me doing it with new friends, and it's, it's really good. The, the, the knock-on effect across North America has been phenomenal. And to get, to get a comprehension, and peop people have said to me, you know, it's so good that you've done this, because you're finally stopping all that kind of, uh, you know, that kind of morbid departure from what you really do well. And, and a friend of mine said, I've always wanted to love your solo career, and now I can. Mm -hmm. Well, it's nice. You know? You're not denying your past anymore. No, not at all. Mm -hmm. Talking about the combination you've got now, these are some young musicians that really, I was reading, they haven't really played outside of bars. Mm -hmm. What's going to happen when they go on a, on a major tour? Well, maybe somebody will write the hammer of the gods around them. <laughs> I don't know. I have no idea. I think that I shall have to make a few rules, like in by 11 kids. Yeah. Um, no, I'm joking. Yeah, well. Yeah, I don't know what's going to happen. They're going to find it incredible, absolutely incredible. Because after the kind of cynicism and uh, of the music, uh, media music and sociological music thing in Britain, which is so kind of blinkered and, and kind of mildly bitter, because punk never delivered the goods, really. So there's a lot of post-punkers, uh, especially rock journalists, who are waiting for the Messiah. John Lydon let them down. Sting got a little smart. And so the climate out there is either Rick Astley or Prove It, you know? So they're going to be so surprised when they get to Quebec in May. And they stand there and go, wow. You know, because the, the report is a lot more honest here. Repartee. Mm. It's great. Do you find yourself taking a little more of a relaxed role in this record and in this band? Like, let, yeah, I have the feeling like you want to be letting some spont spontaneous things mm. happen, like that spontaneity is something that you're hoping to cultivate in this group of people. Yeah, what's happened already is that what you hear on the record is much different on stage. It's a lot rawer. There are, there are mistakes on stage, but they're happy mistakes. And, and we're trying to stretch out and it's a natural phenomenon to be able to do that. Now, that's all right, but we don't want to get deep and meaningless and then make some real long, boring, 70s style approach to it. So we keep it pretty clipped and pretty tight. But it is great. And it is very, um, it's like a celebration. It's like very happy. Mm -hmm. So far, so good. Well, let's see the first video. This is Heaven Knows from mm -hmm. Robert Plant on Much Music.
Let's do that interview. We're back live with Robert Plant in Much Music Studios, and that was the first video from the new record. So you're trying to break some rules and change the minds and um, approach things backwards and get people thinking again. Well, I'm sure that they're doing that every day. I mm -hmm. mean, you hope. I know people who can walk and chew gum, but uh, not many. Yeah. But uh, I just don't, I don't even know. It's not that important. Basically, I'm pleasing myself. Mm -hmm. And you know, there's nothing new about that because I've been doing it forever. I've always... I mean, if you can't live with your own work, there's no point in towing some kind of imaginary line to make sure success is exactly... Because you don't live for success. That's not really what it's all about. It's white, clean and neat, and the way I feel, and Helen of Troy. That's, that's what it's all about. Mm -hmm. uh, make some new rules. Basically, I've just got a sense of humour. I don't think that's a new rule. And a lot of other people were talking about this clone business and this, this situation is so ripe for Led Zeppelin music and everything else, obviously, because mm. everyone else is, is doing it. Is there anybody that's doing it and ripping you off the old Led Zeppelin stuff, with, but with an attitude that you can appreciate? Is there anybody that's doing it and saying, all right, they're owning up to the where they got it from, or is there any way of doing it that you think well, is kind of... I mean, it's, it's, it goes on and on and on, doesn't it? I mean, it's a very uh, interesting question. And if I want to be considered to be a real jerk yeah i can just go blah yeah but i don't think i ought to do that because i've done that quite a lot already so i think i'll do this i think um kingdom come are cute but i think the singer sounds german mm -hmm. he is german and i think the idea of actually making it mysterious to begin with as far as the record company promotion went as to who was actually really playing was clever predictable <laughs> cute but very German you know yeah. uh, so it's almost okay that because they're trying to create some myth and it's all, they're also very happy with their situation with the chemical bank right now mm -hmm. however being smug is all right you, I've been smug all day but really it's pretty tacky to be that close or that all that sort of thing I mean I don't even do that. Well, I was going to say, I mean... But that's just it. I do it on stage, but I don't do it on record, so it fills the gap. I mean, I could have called this album Led What, <laughs> you know, or Leading to, or Led to What, you know? I mean, there's a million things you can do to attract the attention. Now, with um, The Cult and The Mission, and uh, The Cult and The Mission are both ex-punk bands who decided they'd rather play than go back to work. So they modified their, they changed their act as they went along. So the sudden death cult became the death cult. And then they became the cult because it wasn't too offensive. And Ian and the boys, is it Ian? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, were quoted in this, this issue of Rolling Stone that comes out tomorrow on a, in a Led Zeppelin article as saying that Led Zeppelin were a powerful band, blah, blah. And thank God that they're not on tour now because there wouldn't be Baby much room for it. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, that's great, you know, because it's true. Yeah. Uh, and it is true. I think Paige and I have decided to creak and get the, um, the lubricating oil on the joints again. Then maybe they would, everybody would, or those guys would be out. But at least they talk about it and say, yeah, we do like what they did and we do borrow from it. Mm. I mean, I like to see bands copying The Who, because I think The Who was such a kind of seminal influence of rock and roll stunningly good and stunningly seminal and in a way they kind of have to expire before Led Zeppelin because their comments were always about youth or a lot of the time. Uh, where you Led think Zeppelin they're next? To get back together? Well no, to have the kind of treatment of young bands coming along that Kingdom Come for instance was doing. Yeah, I think it'd be nice if they were because I think they're really important. I think they're important in a totally different way. Mm. You know, but I think they were, uh, it would be great because the jam in England got into the kind of Who thing a bit, but only, only took it so far and then stopped. And also my manager manages the Who, so I want to say that it's quite possible. <laughs> ah, are there vocal riffs <laughs> and screams that you will be doing, let's say in a rehearsal situation, and go, I, I can't do that, that sounds just like Robert Plant. Yeah, occasionally I fall over laughing at the fact that I'm parodying myself and I really do need to survive mm. but I don't need to survive by eating potatoes and gravy every day mm. you know there are rarer rarer airs than this one 
and rarer airs than that one. And, um, but I do, if, I've done a dance mix of Heaven Knows that sounds stunning, so good. It's called the Astral Mix, Stairway to Dance, you know, that yeah, sort of. Yeah. And uh, I, I redid the vocal and I put a completely different vocal, a whole lot of love vocal on. And uh, the people who've heard it, who aren't corporate people, were going, this is stunning. This, I can see this in the clubs with guys dancing with each other and everybody having a wonderful time and it really is. And then uh, the industry go, oh no, you're going to do it again, you're going to blow it again. Just when people wanted to embrace you, you just, <laughs> it's like doing a reggae version of Stairway to Heaven. Well, a lot of fans out there would think that that would be completely sacrilegious if you did that. Whose song is it? Mine or theirs? Yeah, it's, it's ours. Yours. Well, it's well, ours. It's a classic. I think yeah. it now. It is everybody. Mm. I mean, there are going to be fans that go, oh no, like he's poking fun at it. This is oh, my no, no, favorite no. song in the whole world and he's poking fun at but it. But we always used to do it as a reggae version at rehearsals. We did. It's true. What fun. What larks, Pip? No, I mean, you get through it a lot quicker because it's faster. Yeah. <laughs> That's how I've always treated lovemaking as well, you know. If you go faster, it'll end quicker and you can get it out of the way. <laughs> and get on to more important things? Yeah. Like Making touring? love. Or <laughs> Again. <laughs> yeah, like touring. Mm. How's that going to feel, being on tour with this band and this record? How is it going to work live? I think, well, because I'm already working in Britain now, I mean, I take a week off to come here and spiel. Mm. Oh, dear. Come I, on, come on. Yeah, yeah. Go, okay, okay. Yeah. And, and because of that, I've taken a week off. I've, I've been working in universities. I played the Marquee Club in London for the first time in 18 years, about three weeks ago, which was quite special. Last time I played there, Paige's woman was just about to come forth with a child. Mm. And the child's 18 and a half now. So to be on that stage again with these young guys who were only like six when I was on stage there last time, mm. it was great, really good. And they shipped in these kind of blasé journalists from Europe. I read a blasé review or two of that mm. from the British press. Oh, you would do? Well, that's, sorry, that's my job, I mm. to read the blasé. How did you feel about it, the reaction? I thought it was great because it was controversial. Mm. I thought that uh, even people like the guy from Melody Maker who didn't really want to like it said, well, I like it, but for all the wrong reasons. And I mean, when you say, I like it, for, it's like, it was a great song title, a doo-wop song called I Love You For Sentimental Reasons. And he liked me for all the wrong reasons. It's like, it doesn't really say much, it just means the guy has got it, but I wish I knew why and I wish I didn't like it. Mm. And that's good, because it creates controversy and I thrive on it. Mm. Well, when are you coming back to play? What are you doing after the show? I don't mind. <laughs> Um, you got your band with you? <laughs> oh, I see. Yeah, ah. Never mind, never mind. Well done, um, that was Thank wonderful. You. Thank you. Uh, I should be bringing the bass player to, to meet you on um, probably, yeah, the next play. <laughs> now, we'll be here in May. In May. Early May. Well, we're going to be watching, and we're going to be watching for a new video, hopefully before that. We'll oh, yeah. get that. Well, yeah, hopefully. Yeah. Well, Come back and see us when we come I and play do. live. And thank you for being so stimulating. I well, thank you Charlie. for being so stimulating yourself. I should tell Charlie all about you. All right. Well, here's some honey drippers to go out on.